Hello, and welcome to Clamp, the creating, living, and making podcast. I'm your host, Adam Mackey, and joining me, as always, is Magic Mike Morley. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have something funny for Grant, but Grant Alexander. Hello. If you want to know what that's in reference to, you have to listen to the pre-show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant, what have you done this week? Have you finished your... Ca- your um, have you finished your cabinet yet? No, I haven't finished my cabinet yet. So when we were talking last week, I mentioned that I would have to either make new drawers or inset the uh, drawer slides because they were, uh, it was like basically it's three millimeters. I measured it. I, I measured in metric just for you, Adam. Uh, it was <laughs> three millimeters difference between what my drawers are and what, the it needs to be so i am using my brand new router that came in early um to uh route into the plywood a little 1.5 millimeters on each side actually like two millimeters on each side because i want to give myself a one millimeter difference um to, so that the the drawer slides are just slightly inset but it doesn't affect them sliding in and out Grant, I saw in your story, it said M18 router, but then it said corded performance. Is it a corded router? Yes. No, it has the performance of a corded. Oh, okay. I was like, that makes no sense. M18 is a battery system. Okay. They're just showing off. Makes sense to me. Yeah. It's just trying to show off that you can, so with the biggest battery with this, you can do 250 (laughs) hours of routing. It's always the way it has... Power corded performance if you use the most expensive, powerful battery we sell. Oh no! It, like it has corded performance with the shitty battery. It just oh, okay. doesn't last yeah. as long. Like so, yeah. I have some batteries that I got. What my wife uh, got when we weren't even married yet, like nine years ago. So I have those batteries still from like the little like cheapo two drill driver set. I still have those batteries yeah. that lasted like 30 minutes in there, but they don't last very long anymore. They're very good. old. Oh, that's not, not bad. How, how, like how often you can use a router for half an hour, unless you're a tradie. Right. Or you're trying to route out the stupid drawer slide things and you're doing it really slowly and trying to be ne- nice and careful. You're only taking off and, two mil. Yeah. But you want to do it in a s- nice straight line. Hmm. Oh, you do your freehand. Yeah, and I'm doing a freehand. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Hmm. But it's an awesome tool. I really love it. Everything I love about it except for the uh, the vacuum port on it is only it, – it points one direction. So everything hmm. about the tool, I go like, they really thought about this. They thought some people like to use two wrenches, so they designed it to have take two wrenches and have the little button that you can press and just use the button. That's cool. So yeah. I like using the button because I don't like having two wrenches. I'd prefer to just have the button. So it's got the button. Mm. Great. But this little vacuum port thing comes off on an angle, which is great if you're using it in a certain direction. But as soon as you try and use it on the other direction, it's it's like impossible to use. And I'm like, is, gosh darn it. Is the base is the base the same uh, d- distance from the router bit on all four sides? Or is there one side that is shorter? Uh, all four sides are the same. Yeah. My, my router has one side that is one centimeter smaller and I didn't realize, and I was halfway through routing something with oh. a template and yeah. So that's annoying. frustrating. Yep. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. It's just been working on drawers. Uh, I've gotten, it takes about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes per slider that I'm doing because I'm using the smallest bit so that I get a nice clean finish and I don't screw up as much and so you're I, doing the whole drawer side right there's no front on there's no front so I'm taking the drawer slide off like the mm-hmm. it's a soft closed drawer slide I'm taking I, I drew around it I take it off I route a 1.5 millimeter 2 millimeter deep uh, hole and then I put it back. And then I do that for all eight of them on that one side. Yeah, stuff that. 
That sucks. I'm not, not putting that in the video. Good. Yeah. What have you been working on this week, Adam? Me? Oh, um, I haven't really done much because my son had his fifth birthday yesterday for... Um, bow, bow, bow. Today we're recording. Yeah, the day we're recording, my son's birthday is yesterday. He turned five. And the day that this episode comes out, my other son turns one the day before. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, been working on birthday parties and all that sort of jazz. Um, and then when I had some spare time, I've been getting some editing done. Um, I thought my next videos were going to be my workbench, but I think I'm going to do the um, floating shelf just to fill in time so I can spend more time on the workbench and making better videos. Nice. So, yeah, that's about it for me. What about you, Molly? Nice. Um, well, I finished up the leather bound journal, which was super satisfying. Um, I'm very, very happy with how it came out and huge shout out to, uh, Jimmy Duresta. And as I mentioned last episode, C lemon, their videos were like incredibly helpful and pretty much gave me everything I needed to make this project. Um, it, yeah, it was just like a lot of, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. So I finished up the video. Um, the day we are recording, it is all done. I'll probably post it on uh, Thursday morning before this podcast comes out. Um, Fun. Yeah. And what else? I, I, You know, it's funny. I just recorded the whole like Patreon podcast about it. So I have like all, I just had said like all the stuff about it and I can't remember anything <laughs> else. Um, yeah. I did my first overnight 3D print uh, to do the printing plate for the cover because I embossed the whole cover. You know, it's a big slab. So those things tend to take a while to print. Um, and yeah, that turned out really, really thank cool. you. Yeah. Um, I initially was like, it took me a little while to figure out what I wanted to do on the cover. Um, I pretty quickly figured out that I want it to be just texture or a pattern and no text. I just wanted something there. Um, so I was thinking about all these different like textures, maybe trying like a 3d embossing, maybe some like water ripple thing. Um, but then I just came back to like these art deco patterns, which I really love. So I just kind of like spent a few hours over the course of a couple of days, just like sketching in fusion 360 and came out with this one with like all these levels of symmetry, um, which I really like. It's one of those patterns where you can just look at it and all the different kind of symmetry and the layers of it all come out. So it's, it's a nice tactile thing. Um, I, it, it looks like old, not not old as in like the like as in you made it so long ago. Old as in like back from like the seventies, mm -hmm. maybe older. Yeah, I'm super excited to see it age. Um, like mm. it's crazy looking at some of the leather stuff I've made over a year ago now, and just how dark it gets. Um, so I, I'm I'm trying to keep this one like close to the window, so it it darkens pretty quickly, and, and try to take it around everywhere, get a nice patina on there. Yeah, totally. It's really like neat. So you came up with that design a hundred percent on your own. That wasn't a pattern that you like copied from somewhere else. Correct. Yeah. So I, I basically like, you know, oh, I mean, cool. it's not, I'm not saying I like invented it, you know, like triangles and diamonds. I was, I was looking at a bunch of art deco patterns and then, um, this one, I mean, I mean the video will be out by then. So I guess I'll talk about it a little more specifically. I kind of just started by like drawing the X in the center and then, was like, oh, like draw a diamond. And then was, I knew I wanted the sort of like crisscrossing zigzag. So I started drawing those and just kind of played around in offsets. When you're doing stuff with symmetrical patterns, it's, I feel like it doesn't take a ton of work to get something that looks really cool. Um, I didn't even notice it was symmetrical at first, but now I'm looking like once you started explaining the X in the middle and the diamonds, and then I noticed it was all symmetrical. Yeah. And actually, so this is a cool tip for Fusion 360. So uh, this is, this sort of pattern was, we did a project kind of like this in my university uh, AutoCAD class where you had to like recreate this mural from like a mosque floor in AutoCAD. And it involved a lot of, you would draw the center lines and then you would offset them and then you would mirror all the symmetry. And it takes a really long time because you have to do all this trimming of all the interior lines because you have a center line and then you have the thickness of the lines. So I didn't want to put in all that work. Right. Um, and the cool thing about Fusion 360 is that you can extrude lines 
to form planes. So if you think about if you extrude a 2D shape, you'll get a 3D shape. If you extrude a line, you'll just get a plane that's perpendicular to that line. So that's what I did. I just hmm. extruded the lines themselves, and then you can use the thicken tool to thicken the plane into a 3D something with depth. Um, so as long as I drafted it with that that's thickness cool. in mind, um, it it is just like a much nicer workflow. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that show will be coming out, and I'm working on a secret project that I cannot talk about. Um, maybe I'll give some more hint. Is this a- is this after show secret? It's or like is this secret legally secret, secret? <laughs> but maybe I'll give some right. hints Ooh. Uh, in the after show. But I picked up That's some uh, some wood today, and uh, it was it was kind of stressful because, like as everyone knows, you know lumber the lumber market is pretty rough right now. We actually, it's affecting our business a lot at the steam project. <laughs> and we do a lot of work with eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. It's like our main consumable. And we realized that um, we weren't going to be able to get any for a while. It's not just that prices have gone up. There's a shortage. And like this was while we were doing in a training activity with the instructors where they were going to use half a sheet, like a 24 or a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of Baltic bridge plywood to design a little train car. And, um, mid when they were designing, I was like, okay, everyone change your plans. We're going to use cardboard instead of plywood. So it's a pretty, pretty, uh, palpable issue in my life right now. And, uh, I could just, I was on the home Depot website and I was trying to figure out, you know, what kind of wood I wanted to use. And I just could see the stock slowly dwindling. Um, this was like, while I was designing and trying to figure out how much wood I needed. So I was like, kind of stress after work trying to figure out exactly it so I could make the order. And uh, it was just a online shopping, especially with shortages like that is not a fun time. I, I hear you 100%. Have you looked at my previous spiffy KJP select because they ship, uh, across North America, including plywood and they have a giant stock of, six, 12, 15 and 18 millimeter plywood in stock. Hmm. Um, I, so I haven't at work been really looking at the, uh, the Baltic birch situation. Um, I know that has been a lot of time has been put into that. So I feel like they've, they've explored a lot of options and they, they've, they're often running with that. But for my project, it was like a single sheet of quarter inch four by eight. So like, um, there's a home Depot need, but I just needed to get it and, uh, bada bing, bada boom, it's all done. So you're complaining about how expensive wood's getting. How much would you pay? How much would you pay now for a quarter inch full sheet? So that sheet cost me 50 bucks Canadian, uh, three ply. So for us normal, yeah, our prices haven't gone up and it's $61. See, the thing is, I don't even know if that's a high price. Like I didn't even really care about the price because like it doesn't, in the scale of the project, it's not really important. I was like, this is really the only material I need for this. Um, I was yeah. more just concerned about the shortage. I feel like it, it's, it's, mm. it's something I'd be concerned about if I was buying a lot of plywood, but for a single sheet, it's like, eh, what's 20 more dollars or whatever. Right. It's, mm. it's the problem comes into home building. Sure. So like OSB has gone from $35 a sheet to 110. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Right. It's so what- Baltic birch at, at three quarter inch Baltic birch at, at uh, four by eight sheet at KJP is currently, I think, 120, maybe Jeez. 130. And that's Baltic Birch versus OSB. I would, if I could do my roof in Baltic Birch, I would, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I, if, if the choice was spend a little bit extra versus OSB, like OSB, I would, I wouldn't put OSB in my house unless that was the last option available. But yeah, I'll just use MDF. I, well, MDF wouldn't. Yeah, it was also <laughs> it was also really annoying with the leather bound journal project. Um, I mean, bookbinding was a new craft for me, and there was a lot of unknowns. Like, I didn't know the type of like glue. I needed to be like a bone folder, which is like a specialty tool. Um, and the paper was like, you know, my thinking is this is the core of this project. This is something that I want to get first and make sure it's right. And I spent like hours just looking at paper online because I couldn't walk into a store and just feel the paper. And luckily, like I did enough research that I got right. what I wanted, but it was just such a time suck not being able to shop in person. 
I yeah, I'm with you 100 percent on that. Like, it's so frustrating to not be able to see or touch or feel things when you're buying online, mm -hmm. right? Like, the, I feel like there's this choice paralysis that happens when you're buying online. Like, when you go into a store, there's only so much there. You look at it, it's either what you wanted or it's not what you wanted, or you buy the best of whatever you can afford. When you get online, you start looking and then you find like this random one-off website that you're not even sure is a real website that potentially some Russian hacker trying to, you know, scam you for your paper money. Uh, you know, like uh, it, but you get there and you're like, there's so many options here. There's like 1500 different types of paper. Yeah. I'm confused. I So 99% of the time, it's not Russian hackers. It's just that Amazon has created a system which incentivizes search engine optimization and not having to create an entire standalone business for product lines. So that's why you have all... Like manufacturers in China will have 20 brands that they sell their shoes underneath just because that's the way the internet marketing works at the moment. It just makes sense for them to market under all these different names because when you offer all these different choices to people, there's that illusion of choice and people tend to buy something where they might not have otherwise. It's like you go into the grocery store and it's why there's 20 types of Oreos now. It's interesting because it, for me, it actually makes it less likely that I buy something. Yeah. Yeah. Because I get broken. <laughs> it is tough. Like, also, I'm sure like, it, like, but again, it's you, p the system recognizes people like you as well. It's why you, you find things that have 3,000 reviews. And Amazon thinks, well, most people are probably going to go with the one with the 3,000 five-star reviews. You've also got like people doing drop shipping and stuff as well mm -hmm. on Amazon and that, which mm -hmm. which makes it hard. Um, but I like things like wood and stuff, I've never considered even buying that online i mean we don't have a shortage so i suppose yet i mean and i yet and I, I don't buy like you know expensive hardwoods and all that sort of stuff that i can't just buy from the local shop but i couldn't i, I it would i would be so stressed out if i bought wood online of what i'm actually gonna get it's like you buy like 10 two by fours go no me i'd get them they'll be all twisted and not even straight it's actually kind of nice with home depot because they have such a great return policy that it's super easy to return stuff um so yeah same for us unless but... you're getting like two by fours where the quality variability is like so high if you're getting something that doesn't have a massive variance um i feel like the, cur the whole curbside pickup thing, which I've been doing at Home Depot for like the last year now, has been like pretty good. It's only when I'm worried that something's going to run out of stock and it feels stressful that it's it's not so good. But the fact that – because I also don't really yeah. like shopping in Home Depot. If I, like I've said before in this podcast, if I, know, if I don't know exactly what I want, I find it like a stressful experience. But if I know what I want and I can just curbside pick up it, I, it's usually really quick. It's usually – ready within the next day. So I'm, I'm kind of liking it. I'm probably going to continue to do curbside pickup for things that I don't feel like I need to touch and feel and pick out of a stack. I'm, I'm not like that with Bunnings, but I'm like that with a lot of like other shops. I'll do click and collect if I can, because I just can't be bothered to go around and collect everything. Um, and again, like it's stressful. Like I'd rather just go in, get my package and walk out. There, so there's like this plus and minus with it, right? There's the plus of they like go into the store and walk through it and find the thing that you ordered and pick it off the shelf and bring it out to you. But the minus is they grab the top three. Like I ordered yeah. three uh, sheets of three quarter inch maple plywood from Home Depot through a curbside pickup because when I went into the store, they didn't have any on the ground and I couldn't find an associate to get the ones off the, you know, like the high rack. So I just said, screw it. I can see them up there. I'll just go home and order it online and wait for them to like get it ready. Uh, so that's what I did. I just said, I'm not, I have more, I have better things to do with my time than stand around and try and find an associate. So I went home and I ordered, but then I just got the first three and the first one happened to be warped. And like, yeah, yeah. could I, I could have made a stink in the store. I could have said, "Hey, this one doesn't look good." I could have, I could have returned it, like you're saying, Morley. They do have a great return policy, but 
there were, it just makes it like frustrating. You get home and then you take it out and you're like, like this is not what I wanted, right? Like, I, yeah, I was like that I when I bought the MDF for my workbench top. I um, and there was one sheet left that I could easily grab myself off the shelf, but you could tell it was like the bottom sheet that's been like driven over with the floor yeah. lift and it's like it's not damaged, but it was just dirty. And I called an associate down and said, "Hey, can you get me a sheet from like the very top?" cut open a brand new packet and give me a new sheet of MDF. And he's like, oh, there's one right there. I said, yeah, but it's all dirty. He's like, oh, does it really matter? I said, well, yeah, because it's a bench top. So I like, I don't want the dirt on it because I want it to be clean. But yeah. if you're asking for it, does it really matter? That's so frustrating. When uh, he was, says, yeah, he, he just didn't want to have to go get the forklift and stuff. But as soon as I said to him, look, I, I honestly, I just don't want the dirty one. He was like, yeah, to be good. fair, I'll to be it. fair to that employee, uh, retail associates have to go through a lot of crap. So uh, I'm, I will, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt in that situation. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take it to heart or anything. Like he, he was, he was generally just like, does it like? Because people that buy MDF are usually don't. Yeah, they're, like, they're not, not using. That's it the th- that's the thing too. With like for. Home Depot, most people aren't buying two by fours to build a DIY furniture project out of. Like we are not exactly. their target market. Um, actually we've probably become a slight segment of the market because of the whole DIY YouTube culture, everything that's Mm. got relatively popular in the last five, 10 years. But compared with like home building, as you mentioned, like that is, that is what they're going to cater to like 99% of the time. Well, I'm sure home demo demo. I'm sure home depot is very similar to Bunnings in the fact that it is actually way more expensive than it needs to be. And the fact that they know that tradies will pay that price because they're not paying out of their own pocket. It's the people that are building the house are like, well, this is how much it is too bad. And that's why they charge so much. Whereas if you go to like a specialized place, you can get it a lot cheaper. I can drive two hours north and get sheets of plywood for 30 bucks each. Right. Or I go to so Bunnings. What you're, paying, what you're paying for at Home Depot is the convenience of their hours. So if you yeah. want that other... Because like my friend ordered a whole bunch of like wood to build a shed, and he was like he looked at the Home Depot prices, and then he called around, and it was way cheaper to get them through uh, like oh, yeah. a, a different place, but it was available next week, and he was like, yeah. "I can't get it today. No, you got to. They're going to deliver it next week. That's when you get mm. it, right? And you're not even just paying the, for the convenience of the hours. You're paying for the convenience of the location. I mean, most of those specialty lumber suppliers mm-hmm. are like not in urban areas. Um, and it's funny, like we have a we have a, a charcoal grill in our backyard, and I posted on my Instagram stories a couple weeks ago. But like we christened it, uh, and we christened it with scrap wood because it was for some reason the two big big grocery stores that are like across the street neither of them had charcoal which i don't understand coming from a place where like the local grocery stores that's just like a staple that they have um so we wanted to grill again and i was planning on just like using scrap wood or like trying to find it somewhere else and we walked by a convenience store and saw that they had charcoal outside i was like oh my god there it is i need to get it right now because like this has been such a pain to find and as I'm walking inside, I'm like, this is going to be so expensive. And I go to check out and the guy's like $18 for a 10 pound bag or not even like nine pound bag of charcoal. And it was, it was the nicer charcoal. Yeah. And there was a moment where I was like, ah, and then I was like, you know what? I never have to think about this again. Like we have to use so little charcoal for grilling for two people. That's the price I'm paying for convenience. And honestly, it's pretty much worth it. We grilled that night, probably used about a tenth of the bag. I'm like, you know, two, three dollars for a dinner. Yeah, that's that's fine. So I feel like that convenience price a lot of the time like is kind of worth it, which is why it is what it is. It's like the market kind of works. The only place I've seen charcoal in my entire life was when I worked at 7-Eleven. Really? It's not a it's that so is. it's just not a staple at grocery stores in Ontario. I guess well not in like southern That Ontario. is so strange to me. It is Where maybe maybe it's just also yeah. like we we grilled so much growing up like on the charcoal grill and it was just we would get it all the time and it was always at the front of the grocery store in New Hampshire. 
I have never, ever, ever in my entire life had food on the charcoal grill. Oh, uh, Grant, when you come to Toronto, we're going to cook up on the charcoal grill. It's the best. Nice. Uh, yeah, grilling with the pine yeah. scrap wood. Um, pine is not the best grilling wood. Uh, it's it, it has that little bit of pine no. sap taste. It's not like super strong, but you know, when you cook over like a campfire, it's the type of thing where like you want to eat it right then and there when the smoke is still kind of in your nose and it's disguising the pungency of the smell. But when you open a Tupperware of leftover, when you open a Tupperware of leftovers the next day, you're like, wow, that is strong. <laughs> that is a smoky smell. Well, you know, thinking about buying online versus buying in person. So I, I was trying to get um, some screws. And screws seem like something very simple that you should be able to easily buy online, right? Mm -hmm. You should be able to just type in like, here's the what I need, tap, tap, tap. Here's what I want. Here's the dimensions. I want a number eight, two and a half inch machine screw with a round head, right? No, not that's like impossible to find. So I finally, they didn't have them at Home Depot, which I'm like, I know they have them in Home Depot. They have them there. I've been there. I bought them, but I couldn't find them on the Home Depot online. So I said, screw it. I went to Canadian Tire and the Canadian Tire website is the worst, the worst website. I hate it so much, but they had them, but they had two different listings for them. And I went into the first listing and I was like, great. They have them. They have them in stock. It's the dimensions I want. Like every listing basically had like when you got there, you got to choose your dimension. So I, I didn't think about it further. The other listing, one listing was for the five pack and the other listing was for the uh, 25 pack. And I needed 50 of the screws. And I and the five pack was $3.79. And the 25 pack was $6. Hmm. And I didn't realize this, but I bought, bought 50 in the three five packs. Oh no. So I paid way too much. <laughs> and if I was in the store, I would not have done that because they're right beside each other, right? Like Yeah. So I paid yeah. so, like you know three f- ten times as much. I'm so frustrated with myself. I'm gonna throw out a speculation. Who buys five screws? Uh people who don't five know is better, a stupid hardware store. <laughs> yeah. I'm sh- people buy, that's why they charge it and that's why they sell them. I'm sure it's it's more than yeah. you would think. So Here's my hypothesis for why screws are difficult to buy online because they're heavy. Heavy things are not incentivized to buy online because it's going to cost a lot to ship. And most so e-commerce good. people want to offer free shipping. So if it's really heavy, they're probably not going to put a lot of work into selling it online. That's probably and again, true. it's probably most yeah. people who are buying it are in the trades and it's an industry that is not largely buying online. They have their supply chain. Um, they have their warehouses that they go to. So I, um, I keep a very big stock of screws because they're so damn ex- I can't believe how expensive screws are. Um, so once a year, do you guys have Audi yeah. in Canada? Yeah. No. So once a year, Audi brings out tools and screws and all that. And they sell like bulk, like, um, I think I pay $6 for 600 screws. So I just go and buy a crap ton. I, I have like 20,000 screws down in my garage. Um, now they, the screws are fine, but the problem is if you use a screw and take it out, you can't put it back in because like the, the head is so cheap. It just threads. Um, which yeah, to me question. though, but to me, I'm like, I have that many screws that I just, if I take it out, I throw it out and put a new mm-hmm. one in. They're that cheap. Whereas if mm-hmm. I go to Bunnings for 600 screws, I'm going to be paying like 50 bucks. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's interesting how, like, how variable the pricing of things are like across industries mm-hmm. and space. Like you can, for example, when I was working um, for the scenery shop, we were going to strike the set. We were going to take the set down for Top Chef. And the main consideration there is we need to do it. Well, there's two main considerations. The first one is, A, this we have three days to do this, so we need to do it as fast as possible. And then, B, they probably want to reuse the set next year. So let's not destroy it, but if it gets battered up, it's okay. 
So it's a balance between speed and efficiency. What's not important is saving every little screw. That is not a consideration. Yeah. So literally we're unscrewing mm-hmm. flats from one another, dropping the screws onto the floor, sweeping them into a pile and throwing them away. So when I saw that happening, I was like, are yeah. we, we're not, cause I was learning, right? I'm like, oh, so are we just not picking up the screws? And they're like, no, no one cares. So I was like, he's like, you should take as many as you can. So I like during downtime, I would just fill up a bag <laughs> with screws and I got like hundreds of, of pan head oh. and wood screws from that project that I still have now. Um, and it's just, nice. it's like those sorts of things just happen across industries. And it's amazing when you find the industry that doesn't care about the thing that you care about. And it's just like a match made in heaven. Yeah. Well, I've talked about this before. Like when you see them doing renovations on, on station, like I see it all the time on the train, there's just sheets of plywood just stacked and they literally just throw it all away to them. It's nothing. And I'm like, but I can't take it because that's stealing. No one will give me permission to take it and I'm not allowed to take it. You can't ask like the site manager or something. No, that you're not allowed. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's one of those times where stealing in person is much better than stealing online. I don't even know how you would steal online. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be like a hacker. <laughs> Good. A, yeah. ma- a man named uh, 4chan. <laughs> well, when you were early, guys, you guys were talking about buying wood online and like going to Home Depot. So I did I, – I bought some wood from KJP. And I ordered a bunch of just common maple because that's what all the plywood's maple, all the fronts are maple in my closet build. And I decided to order uh, like pre-dressed lumber. So it's like dressed four sides. I, what do you guys call that in Australia? Dress, instead of dressed well, four sides, you guys call it something different. Dress, dressed all around. Dressed all yeah. around. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was talking with Fix It Fingers, and he mentioned, he said I got some dar wood, and I was like, "What are you talking yeah, about?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Uh, anyways, so I ordered this. It's all like dress for sides, great lumber, right? And then I got enough wood to do my project, and they uh, also threw in. Well, instead of uh, the the two boards I ordered, they put in a two boards of curly maple, which is twice the price. Like it's instead of this nine dollars a board, it's twenty dollars a board, and I go, yeah. Well, I can't use it in this project because it doesn't look like the rest of the the stuff. And I go, uh, you know, it's it's kind of frustrating because I I got better wood, right? I got like in in reality, I ended up with twice I got twice the amount of money, right? But I had to go and order more wood. And hopefully it's, I got the email today to go pick it up, but I was busy at work, so I wasn't able to do it. But hopefully I don't get more curly maple. If I do, well, I'll say something. I wasn't inspecting it when they put it in my car last time. And I probably wouldn't have said anything because I probably wouldn't have thought about it. But I don't know. It's one of those things. Have you guys ever had that where, See, this where is something where... you order online comes in better than you expected, but it makes it worse for you? No, it's only made. No, it but this is where I wouldn't say anything and just buy some more, and then just keep well, the curly maple. That's what I'm doing. If yeah. Matt, the owner, is listening, because uh, every once in a while he does listen. <laughs> Sorry, bud, you guys screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I don't think I've had any experiences like that. Yeah, it's it's happened to me a couple times where you you don't get what you ordered, you get something better than what you ordered, but it's not what you ordered, so it doesn't. It's just frustrating, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Another thing, like this week, I've literally been ordering a bunch of stuff online. So there's this like thing going around that says like instead of ordering off Amazon, find that same thing from the the people that are. You know that that actual company, and then buy it from them directly instead of through Amazon. Um, you know, just in case uh, they'll make more money. So I did that. I ordered a trailer hitch, and I went great. It's you know whatever. I found the company. I ordered it from them. A different trailer hitch came than what I ordered. It was very similar, 
but because of the way my bumper is and the where my trailer hitch is, I need a very specific trailer hitch. It's the only one that will work. And they come in like a four inch riser and a five inch riser and whatever. And I ordered the four inch riser one, and it came, and a different one came. And I just went like if I could have gone in store and saw with the selection, yeah. I wouldn't have bought the wrong one. Like I know what I need, so I email them and I say. You guys, you guys sent me the wrong one. You guys sent me part number 9643 and I needed 9692, right? Or whatever. And what I got back was, no, they're the same. <laughs> right? I got like, no, are you sure? this? Because there's only a little difference between the two. And I went, right. And I already told you like this. What, like I, I wrote to them. I said, you sent me the wrong one. It won't work on my car. And they said, are you sure? Because they're practically the same, and I went, no, obviously, practically I'm sure. isn't the same. Exactly. Yeah. So I hate it when I, you get back. Oh well, we'll give you a refund of like half the amount. I'm like, that's not going to help me though. I still can't use the item. Oh yeah. oh no, they offered to yeah they offered half the amount. That would have been nice. They offered a twenty percent discount. Yeah, or even that. Like, <laughs> like how's that going to help me at all? <laughs> right, and I, I went, know, I think- no. You, well, they offered to refund as well. So yeah. One thing that I, I kind of miss from in-store shopping is um, is just being able to walk through aisles and just get ideas about stuff. Um, it's something I haven't done very many times, totally. but um, just taking the time to like stroll through the aisles of Home Depot that I don't normally go down and look at all the different like plumbing fittings or the different appliances and stuff and just kind of think about ways that I might want to use them in a project or make them better. It's just not an option anymore. So we live right across the street um, from this place called FEMA and FEMA is, they make espresso machines. Um, they make very, very nice espresso machines and they have these big plate glass windows in the front that just show off all their, you know, beautiful $10,000 espresso machines that cafes buy. Um, and I am like so excited to go inside and just walk around and look at all their stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't really know when, yeah, it will it will be soon ish in the next few months. What's really cool as well is that you, so you guys aren't actually allowed to go in shops. Um, not currently because of the stay at home order. We we were oh. for a bit. They just had reduced capacity, but they kind of like they kind of um clamped back down. <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, <laughs> in the past <laughs> month, uh, but that stay at home order is tentatively lifting on June second. Um, yeah. so you know, like currently, you can only really go into pharmacies grocery stores, liquor stores, and other businesses that the government decides are essential. Well, I, I could not like imagine a very like, long list. We we have never got that far. Yeah. Like, I have never not been able to just walk into any Different shop. Different world, baby. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So this is why I've been ordering so much stuff online is mm-hmm. because – I can't go somewhere. It's so frustrating. Like screws. Like, have you ever, hey, could you imagine if you're halfway through a project, you run out of screws and you have to submit an order online and hopefully they'll get to you before the end of the day. Yeah. Like that. No, that's yeah. That's, that's See, what we're currently doing. And that, and that's, that's what um, to me like determines whether I buy online or not is like when I need it. I'm, I hate waiting for things. Like I used to, when I was young, I'd buy like a lot of like LED strips and all that. Cause I thought I was cool and put them in my car and, and I would always buy them from China. Cause you could get them for like a dollar on eBay, but you had to wait a month yeah. for them to come. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I'll, I'll just go pay the 20 bucks for a strip. Mm. Cause I don't want to wait. Like, yeah. Right. That's uh. I was, I was listening to uh, an interview on the CBC, which Adam is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. It's like our public radio here. And um, there's a guy talking about the travel industry during COVID and just how the nature of his business has changed so much in the fact that people used to not care about all the terms and conditions when they would book a trip. They'd be like, eh, you know, I don't need insurance. Uh, I don't really care what the refund policy is. But now yeah. people spend like, three times the amount of time being like, okay, so like when can I cancel until, and like, what is the refund? Like all of those things that you didn't used to care about, but now are so important because Mm. it's actually happened. It's like, you don't care about fire insurance until you have a fire in your house. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. And it's, it, it, yeah. it's similar like shifting of priorities with like, you know, paying for the expedited shipping time. It's like, you know, it's like we were talking about earlier, like paying for convenience. Like, oh, of course I'm going to pay $30. Like I need this as soon as possible. I'm not going to wait an extra day or an extra week <laughs> more likely. Yeah. Right. Was I bought um, I bought some headphones online and I paid for express shipping because I don't want to wait for it. Mm-hmm. It's funny that like drone delivery hasn't it, sped up during COVID, but I guess there's so many people in sprinter vans that are just doing all the Amazon fulfillment that uh, it hasn't really been, there hasn't been a push for it. It's what you guys have sprinter vans a lot. Yeah, lots of sprinter uh, vans. Most of ours are, is either a white Dodge caravan or the person's like personal car. There's some of that, but I think like, just because of the density here, it's, you know, they're trying to cram as many packages as they can into a, volume and sprinter vans are big boxes so it makes a lot of sense i'm guessing like sprinter van i heard once amazon started really ramping up became very difficult to buy yeah they're they're like the hot commodity in toronto yeah yeah so what does amazon have their own delivery people they do yeah i'm not sure exactly how they do it they have their own fleets i think they also have like a gig economy sort of setup so amazon has in the States has their own delivery people, maybe in mm-hmm. Toronto around here, they don't use an Amazon delivery. They use uh, like a courier service that basically yeah. like it's called in telecom. It basically services the Amazon warehouse. Like, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, like that's what their whole business model is based off of. And they're all based on like these gig economy, like how many deliveries can you get out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although I mean, Amazon's kind of not, their their MO is to insource most of their operations and vertically integrate. So I feel like probably as a whole, their business model is moving towards just doing all their own fulfillment. Um, Cause they can, they'll figure out a way to do it cheaper than if they pay other people to do it. Uh, well, unless you're saying if the gig economy, you know, not paying unemployment premiums and all that stuff is cheaper then maybe they'll just continue doing that. It's crazy though. Like, there's a whole the, the town of Brampton, Brampton outside of Toronto is just like most of it is Amazon warehouses. That's where all the massive Amazon warehouses are. Football fields. We're getting one we, here in Ottawa. I think it's a million square feet. Well, like we it's a, an in, it's a stupid amount. It's like it's going to be one of their biggest warehouses. We've only just actually got Amazon. Um, previously, if you went to amazon.com.au, which is like the Australian one, it was a bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So now, um, they've finally integrated like that. It's an actual, what Amazon, what you guys think Amazon is. And I think we have one warehouse in Australia. Interesting. And that's, it. that's one of the reasons I like yeah. doing this podcast is just finding out the different, like, do- like cultural differences just between our places. I feel like with the YouTube maker community, sometimes it feels like even if people don't have a business locally, there seems to be this like pressure to talk about businesses that most of an audience knows about. Like, you know, Mm. like people will talk Mm. about like Home Depot or like Ryobi, um, even if where they live, this is kind of just speculation, but I kind of feel like there is this pressure to talk about brands that are widely available for the majority of the audience, most of which, if you're speaking in English, is in the United States. So, and it's, it's, it's funny yeah, how it's often, like, often that doesn't reflect reality. Well, it's, it's even like you guys say Home Depot and stuff all the time without thinking about it. And like, to me, I know what Home Depot is because I watch a lot of like YouTube and YouTube DIY and all that sort of stuff. Where, where every time I say Bunnings, I feel like I need to explain what Bunnings is. Oh, it took me to like thirty episodes then, to know what you were talking about. Yeah, and then just like, <laughs> and then just before when I mentioned it, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to explain it, and I'm just going to say it as if it's completely. It took normal. me forty episodes like, so to figure out what Macros was, and that it is just McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so in Canada, we had uh, a a place called Rona. Which do we like, not still have it? It could have like really. So it's not Canadian anymore. Oh, Lowe's bought okay, it. Okay. So now it's American. They really, really held out a long time. It was a Quebec-based uh, business. Anyways, they could have capitalized on this whole Corona thing, but they didn't because <laughs> most bought it. Rona, all um, the time on to Rona, had- it, I've been very disappointed. It's expensive and has bad selection. Oh, interesting. Every time I went to Rona here, I was like 
their customer service was like 10 times that of Home Depot. Hmm. It's probably, it's probably like location. When I go to location. Lowe's, right, when I feel like I go to the Ottawa, the Lowe's near my house, I feel like it feels like Walmart. Yeah. It's the blue. Which is like, it's very, very, very bright. <laughs> That's good so one. true. Can't find anyone that can help you. Yeah, Lowe's is like Home Depot, but the color temperature is just colder. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the so, difference. So anyways, <laughs> yeah. it's it's So we used to have Rona, and anytime I would say Rona in the last year, people would say coronavirus, and no. No, oh, yeah. that's not where I'm going. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. We, we had a place pop up all over, um, Australia called masters and it was meant to be like the competitor for Bunnings. So it's like how Lowe's and home Depot and Bunnings just completely shut them down. Like they completely went bankrupt here. Hmm. Um, we have another place called, um, home, home timber and hardware, but it's all like little mum and pup shops, but no one uses them because they're not convenient like Bunnings, like they're little shops. So we have something in Canada called Home Hardware. I wonder if they're related because that sounds very similar. It's, it's When you were saying that, I was like, that it sounds exactly like, <laughs> like they're all mum and pop shops who like own this like part of a franchise. I, I feel like Home yeah, Hardware exactly. is the darling of Canadian hardware stores. Like Grant, correct me if I'm wrong, but my impression is like, it's a franchise. It's it's either a very well operated franchise or a chain, and they try to preserve the ownership of the original ones. Like it always says, like Dave and Charlotte's Home Hardware. Like they they yep, put the they put the owner's name prominently on it. Super good customer yep, service. Everyone's same. really nice. They have a lot of like good seasonal stuff that like the big box stores probably don't have. Sometimes like little specialty sections. If it's owned by a certain like ethnic minority, they might have like their wares. Or, or whatever they make that's like extra special. I, I like home hardware. Mm -hmm. I like home hardware too, but it's exactly what Adam said. It is not like I never even go to it. It's like yeah. the times I've gone there, it's like I need three of these things and they only ever have two of them in stock, mm. right? Like whatever it is I need, yeah. they only have one less. <laughs> you just want them to be like, I just I wish you guys were better because you're so great, but <laughs> right. you're just not. Exactly. It's the kid who's just coming in last in the race, but you're just rooting for. Right. It's funny, except the home yeah. hard. So we, I have one like very close to me, like across the street and then down a block. Um, and they have a little storefront but then way behind and extended like the entire length of the block is just a massive lumber yard. And I think they're like the largest lumber supplier for this part of the city. And that's like their main business. Oh, well. It's just none of the lumber is what I want. I like it's all construction grade wood. Mm, like they fair. don't even have, they don't even have Baltic it is birch. unfortunate. Yeah. Most places don't. Yeah. Like that's why that like KJP is able to sell it online. Like, I feel like, they, they'll ship to I your like door. most lumber suppliers do unless they're like specifically a construction lumber supplier. If it's a more general lumber supplier, I feel like they a lot of times have it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm out of my wheelhouse. Um, I feel like that hour just went very quick. Yeah. And that we could talk for so much longer. Um, but I do think we should move on. Um, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for – your support, I guess. Um, anyone who supports us on Patreon who gets access to the pre-show and after show and gets a sick keychain from our one and only Molly. Um, and any other bonus content that we put up there, but not really that often. Um, yeah, so if you want to support us, it's patreon.com slash clamp. I'm never going to Don't downplay the app show. The app um, show is the bonus content. The app show is what you're there for. Oh, yeah. The, the, no, I was saying we don't really put up much um, other and, Yeah, but don't worry about extra bonus content. You, that, you're coming for the app yeah, show. This week, it's, it's the best. Yeah. I'm going to be is. talking about this week in something, something secret. Ooh. Well, it's not very secret, but it's a little bit secret in whether or not I, <laughs> I'm going to be breaking the law <laughs> oh. in the future. Oh, I like that. So sign up for the Patreon to find out whether yeah. or not I should break the law. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but we understand that everyone isn't into Patreon and, and all that sort of stuff. So we would just appreciate a share or um, 
like if you can share a show out that helps us immensely um leaving reviews helps a lot molly likes to um to read them and we actually have one this week all right i'm gonna do it now then because that's the perfect segue so review yes. this week um i'm gonna say his name afterwards so i'm gonna read the review first so five star review thank you very much um and in his voice he says <clears throat> Wonderful conversations between three awesome fellas. While they're all makers, the topics discussed can apply to many facets of life. It'll be a shame when this podcast has to find a new host because Adam, I'm sure, will soon be taken captive by kangaroos. Although that may lead to a spinoff show where Morley and Grant play the Liam needing role in taking and hunt down the rogue Rue that holds their co-host captive. I believe you know where I am, and I expect an exaggerated, over-the-top version of that accent. Please and thank you. And that is from Justin O'Flair, or... I think it's Ofer, uh, from Bear Naked. Thanks very much, Justin. <laughs> and, okay. I love that. Do, don't say where it's from. I would like everyone in the to go on Instagram and comment on this show's Instagram post about where you think Morley was trying to be. Ooh, I like and that. if your name is Justin from Bear Naked, you can't comment. I will say too that having spoken to Justin, uh, I was more going for his voice rather than the region he's from. But I think he also has the Which accent of the he, region. He's from. He, he has, yeah, yeah. totally. All right. Even though he lived in Arizona for a bit. <laughs> Clint Mendations? <laughs> yep. Let's move on to Clint Mendations. Clint Mendations. All right. My right. clamendation this week, I realized I already shot him out, but he deserves a second one because he's doing awesome work. Kevin Raposo at the Speedy Photographer, or at Speedy Photographer, rather. There's no the. Uh, he was one of our guests on Into the Spotlight, and he's just killing it. Like I think he's up to like over 5,000 subscribers on YouTube now with a relatively young channel. Um, he puts out mm. like really, really great to-the-point photography tutorials. Um, he has a full paid course as well, but honestly, just his like short stuff on Instagram, his tips about like focus and aperture and just like larger macro level things about photography um, are just really, really great. Um, so his Instagram account is still pretty small. So go check him out. Um, his main, the account that I'm talking about is at Speedy Photographer, but you can also find him at Kevin Raposo. He's on YouTube, TikTok as well. I just found he's like doing pretty well on TikTok as well, but he's a good guy and um, he's really putting a lot into these videos. Cool. Uh, well, my clamination this week is going to be a series. It's season three, but it's called Car Trek. Um, three huge, three like big car YouTubers pretty much just like made their own version of Top Gear. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Um, seasons one and two are really good, but they're halfway through season three at the moment. They're releasing an episode like every couple of days. Yeah, it's hmm. really good. They bought some old for. Um, they like have a competition of like who can buy. They had to buy a Ferrari for the price of a uh, Camry, and then drive it across America. So yeah, well, mm. that's fun. Mm. Well, for me this week, I'm going to be uh, giving my clamp mandation to uh, Skull and Spade Thirteen, Brett McAfee, um, for his battle ready armor plated leather Converse shoes that he made for. Uh, uh, I Jess up, um, Jess you, you wait a, um, what I like about this is not just how, like, obviously they're kind of cool. Like they're like, not, it's like, they're not functional shoes, right? They're, they're obviously wearable, but they're like, you're not going to wear them every day. But what he did is he actually took them and like, he knows that Jess's style is like two different colored shoes. So he brassed one of them. And like, I just think they, they turned out really good. Um, they're in response to a bunch of people telling her that she needed to wear steel toe boots when she was working on her house and what's better than steel toe boots than armor plating. Um, and I just think they, they turned out really well. And I know he put a lot of, uh, you know, like work into it. And I, I think it, it turned out really great. So you should go check out that video. I think Brett's one of the people that's one of the most undersubscribed uh, YouTubers out there. He's, uh, just about getting hitting, uh, I think he's at twenty nine thousand subscribers, and he deserves 
way more for how much work he puts into his videos. By the way, this happens to be a Maker Adventure video, which is my favorite of his. Um, if you haven't checked out the Maker Adventure series, it's awesome. It's like he has like a little video game intro and outro and like inventory. Yeah, and, uh, it's it's like the most fun. I know it's so much work and it's probably not worth the the effort that he puts into like for how many views it it, it nets him. But I I personally feel like those are his like they're the ones they're the videos that I really love the most. That like Maker Adventure thing. I don't know. Anyways, go watch. Yeah, that's cool. So, something different too. Totally. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, I'd like to thank uh, TF Turning for our theme music. And you can find us at Clip Car. Yeah, Clip Cast on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. And I think that's you can also it. watch the show on YouTube. Um, oh yes, yeah, so we can watch the show. You want to see our beautiful faces, and you can see if you, well, so yeah. can you flex for the camera, Marley? Let's go! <laughs> Look at those muscles, Jesus! Jesus! Christ. Do you have a license for those guns? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Up later. Potter movie or something because they won't do it to her specs. Well, the series is over. Like what she wants or something. There was some, maybe it wasn't Harry Potter, but there was something where they the writer of the book refused to oh, let them make Game another movie because R. R. Martin. maybe it was Game of Thrones. Yeah, they didn't finish it. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, there was a big controversy. He was pissed off at the way they ended it and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well. They basically said you got like five years to write another book, and he said no problem. Start your show, and five yeah. years later he still hadn't finished the book. So 